welcome to your Surgery Connect training. Surgery Connect is based on voiceover internet protocol rather than the old legacy lines. So that will mean from the front end, you'll have no line capacity issues. Even if 100 patients were to call at once, every single one of them is answered by the system. Nobody gets the engage tone and then they'll all go into the queue that's built specifically for your practice. Within that queue, they'll get their queue position so they know how many people have got to be answered before they are. There's also the option of adding in patient callback, which is our automated callback system. If your queues are particularly long and that limit can be set by your practice, then the patients are offered a callback rather than waiting on the phone in the queue. And if they accept the callback option, they just press one on their telephone keypad. The patient can then put the phone down and Surgery Connect will hold their position in the queue until they would have reached the front. So there's no benefit to staying on the phone overtaking for your patient callback. You'll end up at the front of the queue at exactly the same point as you would have done. As the call's been presented to one of you on reception, it will say contacting caller, and then you'll hear the outbound ringing tone as the system rings the patient back on the number that they rang in on earlier. So if a patient withholds their number when ringing the practice, they won't be offered callback as there's no number to call them back on. There's no extra work for you in reception team. Just be aware that one of those inbound calls may be a call back to the patient, but that will happen automatically for you. So when they answer, just let them know it's the call back from the practice, and then you can find out how you can help as you would do normally. There's also no capacity limit on outbound calls for the, on this Surgery Connect system. So if you need to make an outbound call, even when it's busy with inbound calls from patients, you'll always be able to do that. Through the phone bar, you can actually see who's available for a call before you go to make a call. So if you're using the uh, directory on the phone bar, you can actually see who's available and whether they're already on a call before you make that call. All the calls on Surgery Connect are recorded, so both inbound and outbound calls, regardless of the device that's used. So Surgery Connect is clever enough to send your calls to different phones, depending on how you're working. And it doesn't matter where the call ends up, so long as it's gone through Surgery Connect, it will be recorded for you. You can also switch from audio to video during a call. So if you're making a call through the phone bar and you're speaking to the patient on their mobile phone, you can actually convert that call to a video call during the call. There's no extra apps for the patient to download. Phone bar will send out an automated text for you, which will have a link to the video call. And the patient, once they receive that text, can just click on the link, say yes to using the camera on their smartphone and yes to the video call. And that's when the audio call drops and then the video call will be ringing on the screen from the patient for you. You can also work remotely more easily on this system. So it doesn't really matter whereabouts you're sat within the practice, whichever phone you log into will become your extension number. And you can also access Surgery Connect anywhere where you can access the internet. So you can access Surgery Connect via a website and you can then make and receive exactly the same calls as you would do normally within the practice and patients don't know any difference at all. So the main thing to think about on this system is actually users rather than phones. So the individual desk phones in the practice don't have their own extension number. It does rely on a user logging into that phone to give the phone a number that you can then call. So each user on the system will have their own internal short dial number. So you'll all have your own extension number and that will stay the same no matter where you log in to Surgery Connect. We can also make the numbers direct dial. So if you've got people that need to contact you directly, they can do. And again, those numbers will follow you around no matter where you log in. And you'll also be part of a group or maybe more than one group on the system. Those groups also have their own internal number. So if people don't mind who they speak to within the team, they can ring the group number rather than the individual. And that will then just go straight through to whoever's next available in that team to take that call. And that's how your patient calls would normally be distributed as well. So they'll ring the main practice number. They'll go through a call flow on Surgery Connect, which will give them some information and may ask them to choose what sort of thing it is that they're calling about. So typically that would be things like appointments, prescription queries, test results, or just general reception inquiries. 
Once they've made their selection, they'll then queue for the team that answers those particular queries. And when the call reaches the front of the queue, it will look around uh, the users that are logged in and see who's been waiting for a call the longest, and it will ring that person's phone first. It rings your phone for about 30 seconds, and if you're not available and don't answer, it will then move on to the next person within the team, and it will ring their phone, and it will move around each member of the team in turn to see who can answer that call. Now, if you're available when the call comes in and you answer the call, the first thing that you're going to hear on Surgery Connect is actually a little voice that we call a whisper that tells you what this call should be about. So if it's a patient callback call, as the call's presented, it will say contacting caller. If it's a call into your internal short dial or a direct dial number that you have, it will say direct call as you answer the phone. And if it's a call through one of the groups, it will tell you the name of the group. So it may say appointments call or prescription queries call or test results call, depending on which groups you have set up and which groups you're a member of within the practice to answer the calls through. Once you've had that whisper, that's when you can answer the phone as you do normally within the practice. And it doesn't matter how you answer that call or where, if you're in the practice and logged into one of the phones on the desks, then all your calls will go through that particular phone. However, you could also use the on-screen phone bar, and that would mean then that all the calls are coming directly through the screen on the PC or laptop that you're using to access the clinical database. The phone bar allows access for all telephony functions to be controlled from the PC screen. The phone bar integrates directly with your clinical integration so that you can make and receive internal and external calls and video calls, send ad hoc and template SMS and securely exchange photos. Clinicians can also access their appointments list within the phone bar to seamlessly switch between patient records and call, video call and SMS patients. The phone bar is pinned to the bottom of the main screen PC display and is laid out so that general telephony is located to the left hand side of the phone bar and patient communication is located to the right. So even when minimised, surgeries have access to their patient's contact details. To access the phone bar, once it's been installed onto your PC, the phone bar will have a shortcut on the desktop that will look like the Surgery Connect logo, which is our orange circle here. Once it's set up, the phone bar will start automatically when you log into your PC and will connect to the clinical database when you then log in to the relevant database. We're looking at EMIS here today. Here on my desktop, we can see the icons. So I've got my Surgery Connect logo for the new phone bar and EMIS web here. To first start up the phone bar, initially you'll need to double click on the icon on the desktop and that will then start up the phone bar on your PC and it will then in future start up automatically when you start up the PC. Once started, the phone bar will appear in its minimised format um, with a few icons available on that first screen. I can access the help pages by using the little question mark in the Surgery Connect logo and that will take you straight to our online help features for phone bar. I can also move the phone bar from left and right across the screen, depending on where I want it sat. Most of the icons are going to be greyed out because they're actually to deal with contacting patients directly from their patient record. However, you can expand the phone bar by clicking on the keypad icon and that will then bring up the phone controls. Within the controls here, you can control which device you're making and receiving calls on. At the moment, I have a picture of a headset and that's running the calls directly through the soft phone feature on the phone bar. If I click on the headset here, though, I get the other options available that I can forward my calls on to. So here I could use my personal mobile as the device to make and receive those calls. Or at the bottom, I have the desk phone that's linked to my PC. I can also enter a number directly into the phone bar, so there's no need to type numbers in on the screen. Just by clicking in the box, will allow you to then enter a telephone number. And you can do that just by using the keypad on your keyboard or the numbers across the numeric keys. There's also an internal phone book, which will give you access here 
to all your colleagues' numbers if you're on the group icon here, or if you move to the book on the right hand side, that's the external directory. So in there you'll have both the internal and any external numbers that are useful for the practice. I can search through my list of colleagues and it will tell me who's available using a um, traffic light system. So anybody in green is available to receive calls and then the different colours mean different things for their availability. You can also change your availability directly on the phone bar just over on the right hand side here. You can see at the moment it says that I'm logged in and available for calls and if I were to click on the availability here I would have the other availabilities um, selected. So I can either select then direct calls which means I will receive calls directly into my user short dial or to a direct dial number that I have. If I go into do not disturb it will show me as logged into the system but currently away from my desk. So you can use that option if you ever need to leave your desk for a period. Finally, you've got the away status. So at the end of the day, if you change your status to away, that will log you out of the system and then mean that no calls will come through to you on either your short dial or through a direct dial number on Surgery Connect. There's also a call history. Um, so clicking on that will give you a list of the calls that have been made to and from your number. And you can also call the numbers directly back using the call icon on the screen. Now to complete the login so that I have full access to all of the phone bar, I just need to log into the clinical database. Now if you log in using a smart card, your automatic login into the clinical database will automatically open up the access into the phone bar as well. Once the clinical database has opened, the rest of the options on the phone bar become available. I now have a settings cog where I can set what happens when incoming calls come in through Surgery Connect. Opening up the settings will open up a pop-up window which you can move around the screen. On the first tab you'll have the preferences here and Quick File will give you the option to file the correspondence directly to the patient's record within the clinical database. Um, you can also save those for the end um, of the contact with the patient and file them all in one consultation note by using the contact history for the individual patient. I've got the system to find patients when an incoming call comes in, so that's then going to automatically search the clinical database and retrieve any patient details who match the inbound calling number when there's an inbound call on the system. I've also got it set to automatically log me into a desk phone here. However, I can always change that by just clicking on the icon on the screen and swapping it back to my desk, uh, to my soft phone there. I also have the active patient window here. So I have a little person icon. And if I had a patient active in the clinical database, it would pull their contact details and I would be able to have quick and easy communication with that patient through different methods. So things like uh, a telephone call, you can set up a video call with the patient, you can request photos from the patient and then receive those and save them directly into the patient's record. And you could also um, send them text messages through the phone bar automatically. Next to our active patient icon, we have the appointments icon. I can click on that and it will open up a, an appointments list from the clinical database. Within the window, I can select the list that I need to look out for the practice. And it will then bring the patient's details up onto the screen for me. And I can now call the patients directly through this appointments list. I've got the same icons as my active patient here to either call, send a text, do a photo request or a video call or to file things through the contact history for that particular patient. I can also send out a text to all of the patients in the list to warn them that their appointment is coming up today and that I'll be ringing them later on in the day. As you go through the list you can refresh it to the top although it will auto refresh each time you open up the appointments list there. You can then call patients directly from that list just by using the icon and that will then create the call for you through the phone bar if that's the way that you contact the patient and when they answer we can then mark that as completed within the appointments list.
that will then cross out that particular patient so that we can see then that is completed. Of course, I could file the correspondence as well directly through the contact history then for the patient as well to make sure it's all saved into the consultation notes. I'm going to show you now how easy it is to uh, make a call on the phone bar. So I'm going to make an internal call. And if I click on the phone book here down at the bottom, I've got the list of all my colleagues. Now you can search this list just by typing in the name of the colleague that you're looking for, and it will then give you a, a list of all the people that may match that particular criteria. You'll also have any groups that you've got set up, um, and it will also retrieve the members of that group. So I have Dr. Lorna's number here. I can now just click on the phone and that will begin the call to Dr. Lorna herself. You can see the progress of the call and as soon as the call is answered, it will then swap to talking. And we now have some call features that we can control the call through the phone bar. On the left hand side here, I've got a record section. So this is recording the call and obviously counting the timer on the call as well. If I need to pause the recording on this call for any reason, I can just click on the record icon and that will pause the recording and you'll get a little voice in your ear to tell you that that recording has been paused. I can restart the recording just by clicking on the icon again and it will then restart the call recording for me. If I need to transfer this call, I have a transfer icon here with the arrow and when I click on transfer, it will automatically put the call on hold whilst I then dial a second number. I can either dial that number from the phone book um, or I have icons down at the bottom here so that I can choose other communication uh, methods. So I've got our external directory here as well. I've got my own call history or if it's just another number that I want to dial rather than one of my colleagues, I can also use the phone here to bring up a dialer so I can dial an individual number. To transfer to a colleague though, I just need to find the colleague's details. And when they're available, I can then click on the blue phone and that will then begin the transfer call to that particular user. When they answer, there'll be another transfer icon for you to complete that transfer, which will then drop you out of that call. I can put the call on hold by using the, uh, whole, the pause signature here over the telephone. That will then play the call of music whilst they're waiting so they know they've not been cut off. I could also mute my microphone here. So if I've just got a quick question to ask one of my colleagues, I can mute the mic, which means I'd still be able to hear the patient conversation, but they wouldn't be able to hear me. I also have a keypad here. So if I need to dial any other functions to access any numbers, I can do that directly through the phone bar on the screen. And the red phone will end that call for me. Now, when there's an inbound call from a patient, phone bar will automatically search the clinical database and will then retrieve any patient details and display those on your screen just above the phone bar so you'll know which patient it's calling. If there's more than one patient you may see a list of patients across the top of the screen so when you answer the call which you can do using the green phone you can then check which patient you're dealing with and if you click on the patient's name, it will then open that patient record within the clinical database automatically for you. All of the correspondence with that patient now can be associated directly to that patient's clinical record. So a copy of the call recording can be added and you can do that through the active patient window. If you go into the active patient options on the right hand side, it will bring up the different communication methods available for that patient. So we have the call, sending out a text, we can begin a video call, or we can send photos or request photos here. One of the newer features of the phone bar is the ability to send photo requests to patients. I'm gonna swap patients in our clinical database and then open up a patient that I need to receive a picture from. Even in its minimized format, I can access the active patient option within the phone bar. I've now got Bridget's contact details shown instead of Geraldine's, and I can now request a photo just by clicking on the photo link. If I'm happy to use the mobile number that's on file, then when I hover over the, the picture, it will then bring up the number it's going to use. Alternatively, 
I could add on alternative mobile or email address within the box at the bottom and then dial that by using the dial icon on the end. I'm just going to click on the icon and that will then open up the photo request for Bridget Jones. It's confirming again the patient contact number and it's coming from me and that's who it's coming back to. I could also change that from the drop down here to anybody else within the practice if I want them to be notified when the photo comes in. I've also got the option to add in an extra text to the message. There is some generic text that is sent out with any photo request um, about the quality and type of images. However, if you want a specific uh, area taking a photo of, then you can enter that in here. To send the request, it will send that either via a link through a text or through the email. When the patient receives that, they're able to then follow that link and either take a picture at the time or upload a picture that was taken earlier. It will notify you if that picture is more than 24 hours old though. Once the patient's done that, you'll then receive a notification that the photo has been returned. You'll receive a notification on the screen and if you click on the notification it will then take you into the contact history for that patient where you can then view the photo on your screen. Clicking on the cross at the top will then close the image. If you want to add that to the consultation notes for the patient if you just select it within the contact history you can then file that directly to the patient record or if the picture's no use and you don't want to save it, you can also delete that from the system there. Once the image or any call recording has been saved into the patient record, anybody that has access to that patient's record via the clinical database would also be able to view the picture and listen to any call recordings that have been saved in the consultation notes. The very last icon here for our active patient is our contact history and if I click on that one it will then show me the details of the contact that I've had with the current open patient. So we can see here the call that we took earlier and I can actually select the correspondence that I then want to add on to the patient's record and then file that directly to the clinical record. I can also delete any uh, correspondence that we don't need to save all of the calls on uh, Surgery Connect are recorded through the phone bar, so it doesn't matter um, if they're not saved to the clinical records, you would still have an access to that call recording directly through Surgery Connect. Once the correspondence has been filed, you'll have an update on the screen and it will then remove any of that correspondence from the list. You can also see that the clinical database is noting that the record has now been updated so I can just click on the link to reload that clinical record so I have the latest consultation notes there. To log out of the phone bar, change your status in your availability. Make sure at the end of the day it says offline and this will then stop any calls coming through whilst you're not there. It's important to make sure that you log off from any PC even if you're just moving desks for the rest of the day so that you're not logged on to more than one PC at a time through the phone bar.